Hey kids, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the plum pudding model and its history. The plum pudding model, much like many others, was an attempt to illustrate the distinct charge-oriented properties of the atom. Before we blast you with a hot, steamy load of knowledge, let's learn more about J.J. Thompson. J.J. Thompson was born on December 18th of 1856 in Cheatham Hill, Britain. Throughout his childhood, he often moved from one private school to another, always demonstrating superior understanding of physics. In 1870, at the age of 14, he admitted in Owens College, currently known as Manchester University. Although he planned on working in the engineering industry as an apprentice for a local manufacturer, he decided against it after his father passed in 1873. He then moved to Trinity College in 1876, where he would go to receive a degree in the mathematics. After graduating, he developed an interest in atoms, leading him to study more about physics and atomic structure. He first proposed the plum pudding model in 1904, shortly after his own discovery of the electron. Moreover, Thompson's theory of the plum pudding model in the early 20th century earned him a Nobel Prize. He died on August 30th of 1940. When contemplating the model to be used for the representation of an atom including electrons, Thompson concluded that the charge-oriented properties of the atom could be represented by three different models. One in which every negatively charged electron was paired with a positively charged particle another in which the negatively charged electrons orbited a central region of positively charged particles, and a third in which the negatively charged electrons occupied a space that was in and of itself positively charged. In the end, Thompson decided to go with the third. The electron was discovered by J.J. Thompson in 1904 with a cathode ray tube experiment. He began studying the beams of light which accompany electrical releases in a high vacuum glass tube. The glass was equipped with wires on either end which facilitated the vacuum seal. A current was passed through the tube and created a fluorescent glow. JJ's first experiment theorized that the charge could be separated from the light particles after others figured out that it had a negative charge by applying a magnetic field to the experiment. He made the tube out of metal and connected two electrometers that could measure small electrical charges. He ran the experiment without the magnet and measured the charge. Then he did it with the magnet and found that the charge was completely taken away from the electrometers. His next experiment was to add an electric field. He made a new tube with fluorescent coating at one end and a near perfect vacuum. Halfway down the tube were two electric plates producing a positive anode and a negative cathode. The rays were deflected, proving that the rays were made out of negatively charged particles. His final deduction was to figure out how big the particles that were affected by the charge, so he played around with the charge and the amount of charge to figure out that the particles were either 1,000 times smaller than a hydrogen ion or had a very large charge. The plum pudding model was disapproved by Ernest Rutherford in his gold foil experiment. This experiment was to shine a light at a gold foil and to see how the particles reacted to it. When this experiment was carried out, Rutherford found that some of the particles bounced off of it. He theorized that the electrons were not just floating around in empty space, but rather the particles were hitting something in the middle, the nucleus. He predicted that the nucleus was positive and that the electrons were orbiting around it in rings. 
He figured this out by sending differently charged particles in and seeing what bounced back. Although the scientific community was hesitant at first, they ultimately conformed to the notion of the plum pudding model. The particles discovered in the previously discussed cathode ray were named electrons. As the electrons were visible in the ray, Thomson's discoveries disproved Dalton's theory that such particles were unobservable. Moreover, because previous atomic models adhered to Dalton's assumptions, the scientific community developed an alternative model to reflect the electrons observed in the cathode ray. Although the plum pudding model was flawed, the discovery of electrons undoubtedly paved the way for countless scientific developments. The modern understanding of the particle, in combination with mechanical and biological sciences, accelerated the development of technology as an entity. Thus, the existence of all modern machinery is possible because of our knowledge of the electron, including atomic structure and chemistry as a whole. Any and all socioeconomic, political, commercial, or environmental responses to modern sciences, such as gas emissions or radioactivity, are the result of the initial discovery of the subatomic particle electrons. The atom was a positively charged particle with smaller, negatively charged particles called electrons within it, floating around freely. The electrons resemble the plums, and the positive space parallels the pudding itself.